Is the global economy sitting on a pile of potential gold? Does the Asian infrastructure boom promise to be the lifeline that will pump a new lease of life into its waning coffers? Or is China, the second largest economy around the globe, flexing its economic muscles through its infrastructure initiatives? This is the roadmap of today's discussion. Is China a villain, a positive spin on Chinese projects, and the nuanced truth about China? No discussion can be complete about this massive undertaking without floating the mammoth Chinese Belt and Road Initiative or the deeply questioned AIIB in terms of their hard-hitting impact on the global financial front lines. Boon or Bane, Beijing's brainchild that carries Xi Jinping's distinct intellectual imprint, was brought into motion by the Premier in 2013. As the wheels of time turned, it fueled the flames of an intense, heated debate, drawing a firm dividing line between economists and academics alike. By 2017, the BRI had firmly lodged its tentacles in regions as far as Latin America, euphemistically acquiring the namesake of being a Silk Route extension with a 21st century facelift. Savior or rogue, who will unmask China's real face? As China's role in the global infrastructure arena is minutely studied under the glaring lens of the financial microscope, its potentials and pitfalls are generating quite a buzz as they come to light. The Western camp in particular is wary to the core and immune to China's wily economic charms. Harboring a rather dim view of China's financial shenanigans, Western pundits toss them with disdain to the dim corners of the economic attic, slapping them with the unfavorable label of being tainted with roguish recklessness. Crowned unflatteringly by the West as a rogue donor, the People's Republic quakes under the heavy judgment of the Western diaspora. Its ventures are viewed with raised eyebrows and barely concealed suspicion. For the wary Westerner, they are weapons that don a thinly disguised veneer to bring recipient nations to their economic knees, with trigger-happy China firing the winning shots to forward its economic and political agenda. Why is China receiving such a cold shoulder from the Western community? There's an entire field of red flags that crops up when it comes to Chinese overseas infrastructure setups, especially in developing countries. The typical adjectives that are slapped on Chinese projects are controversial and corrupt, opaque and inefficient, the equivalent of resources chucked into the waste paper basket. Some go so far as to say they damage the very fabric of the very economy they are portraying to lift. Is China a self-serving loan shark? Well, the orbit of the BRI now includes countries that are far, far away from its core focus, namely South and Central Asia, as well as Southeast Asia. The rules for these developing but resource-laden treasure chests are simple. If they play China's game, they have to play by China's rules. China is the judge, jury, and prosecutor. Poo-pooing the concept of partnership the entire economic exchange plays out like a Ponzi pyramid scheme. Chinese countries descend on the native soil of these poor countries and carry on infrastructure building activities with Chinese materials. Who foots the bill? The recipient countries do, of course, with the same currency notes that they have acquired from China on loan. Does this indicate the sprouting of the nefarious limbs of an evolving empire? Possibly. An empire bound on crushing out the competition, dismantling the stronghold of the World Bank and other prominent aid bodies. What lies in the imminent future? Perhaps developing economies using China as a permanent crutch? In the case of default, China gets to gobble the fruit of the country's labor it is lending a helping hand to. Chinese generosity also opens a Pandora's box for corrupt countries with unruly regimes, unleashing the ghouls and demons of commotion, corruption, and civil strife. The long-term prognosis does not look inviting. It seems that Chinese interference in the economic growth of these countries even rigs things in China's favor on the UN stage. Economies that swallow and digest copious amounts of Chinese aid for infrastructure schemes then return the favor by throwing their weight behind PRC during voting rounds at the UN. Quid pro quo. Is the UN's balance of power in jeopardy? Jumping over to the other side of the fence, 
it seems that all is not gloom and doom with Chinese global infrastructure design. Let's turn the page and wander over to the other side, where rose-colored glasses and a glass half-full approach serve as staples at the table of economic discussion. Chinese projects are like fast food, driving a surge of vigor into the veins of developing economies minus the extra calorie and cardiac damage. They replenish, provide a quick fix, and a much-needed energy boost. This is pretty good going on a global scale. Chinese deals do have some economic mass and muscle. For one, they provide rapid solutions to economies ailing under the malaise of development systems that wave the multilateral banner. Proceedings under these systems trickle slowly at the speed of molasses. China cuts swiftly through bureaucratic barriers with more bandwidth for flexibility and a lesser number of preconditions than the Western machinery demands in order to sign on the dotted line. There are studies that have been conducted recently which present a glowing picture of how Chinese initiatives push developing countries to their next level up, administering a soothing bandage on geographic inequality. These countries, in any other scenario, would have only wobbled on their shaky economic footing, otherwise unable to undertake any major infrastructure initiatives on their own. Chinese financing empowers them to puff out their chests proudly with an added notch of success on the goalpost of their national prestige. Competition is brewing, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Where there's competition, old hands at the game and rival outfits get a nudge to budge their dusty behinds and brush off the stale debris. They try to up their game through innovation, which is a win-win for all. Stay on top of your financial game and be a winner by following our channel. As opinions continue to crisscross, crossing over cross-country borders, it emerges that this multi-layered and complex cocktail of ideas carries a narrative that is a lot more nuanced than the rather black and white depiction of good versus bad and benevolent versus evil. The global economic stage is not a comic book after all. Austin Strange, professor at the University of Hong Kong, voiced his views during a lecture series at the Fairbanks Center titled Chinese Studies, Critical Issues Confronting China. Strange set the record straight. The world suffers from a strange sickness, something strange termed as a recency bias, which has turned China into an economic effigy bearing the brunt of global flogging. Case in point, the infamously botched project of the Sri Lankan Hambantota port that has become the distorted face of China's global infrastructure initiatives. Garnering a disproportionate amount of attention from all quarters, it neatly pulls public blinders on China's financing of infrastructure projects around the world and their somewhat illustrious history. China's record is not quite as checkered as media pundits spin it out to be. Let's crack open that elusive and hidden history book and flip through the pages of the introductory chapter. You don't have to venture any further than Guinea. China's financing of Guinea's Caleta hydropower plant in 2015 amped up the country's hydroelectricity to almost double the capacity. Moreover, it helped one third of its population bask under the glow of Thomas Edison's innovative invention. The Chinese-assisted Kinkan hydropower is an ancient project and dates back to more than 50 years ago. Both these landmark achievements make front-page news material feeding into Guinea's national pride. The power plants have even made it to Guinea's Hall of Fame, plastered on two of their banknotes. This shall thin out some of the mist from the glass when it comes to the context of Chinese infrastructure investment. If we unearth reality, many projects in Asia, Africa, and other nations struck it big due to China's financial assistance even though initially, China's own GDP was nothing to brag about being only close to $100. For more eye-opening perspectives, keep your eye on our latest clips. In all the brouhaha about the BRI, What's sneakily sliding under the radar evading attention is the Asian Investment Bank, headquartered in Beijing. Bubble bubble, economic toil and trouble? 2014 saw China add another yet tool to its economic toolkit in order to forward its foreign policy. China happens to be both at the giving and receiving end of the Asian Infrastructure Development Bank. The country's thirst for economic clout seems unquenched, as it shores up this savvy enterprise by becoming its largest shareholder. 
A storm is brewing in the steaming Chinese hot pot. A challenge is being resurrected to the heavily tilted stance that favors a unipolar world. The USA and its Western allies can feel the heat. Let's look at the figures quoted by the Center for Strategic and International Studies. In 2020, the AIIB paired with the World Bank and doled out $50 million to the Corporation Financiera Nacional in Ecuador to lift its small and medium-sized businesses out of the economic quicksand of liquidity constraints. Rwanda's turn was next in 2021, with an added $200 million poured in by AIIB to pull it up by its bootstraps during post-COVID recovery. Brazil has got its coffers ready for a windfall of $100 million, courtesy of Chinese investment in its renewable energy as well as other infrastructure-based sectors. Are the U.S. and other major Western powers ready to hunker down and regroup? Are they back to the drawing board, realigning their power moves to beat China at this game of chess? The competition is stiff. Let us know what you think of this rapidly evolving economic standoff. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Press like and stay connected for more explosive economic content. See you!